Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the words of the Chavetz Chaim in the Sefer Mitzvah HaKatsar. Today, we start with Mitzvah Kuf Pei Hei, number 185. Mitzvah Loisa say a negative commandment, Shalolacha Nijo Vinivosai. You're not allowed to delay follow, uh, fulfilling the vow or the voluntary offering that you said you're going to bring. When a person makes a nether, he should not delay in paying it off. You don't transgress this prohibition until three festivals, Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuos have passed you. Or if you took it after Sukkot, then it's Pesach, Shavuos, and the Sukkot, so on and so forth. With tzedakah, however, when it comes to tzedakah, charity, he gam kem bichal on the dharm, it's also considered to be a nether a vow. Aval al tzedakah, but when it comes to tzedakah, im eicha, if you delay in giving that, oiva v'bal ta'acha miyad, you can transgress this prohibition of delaying in the payment immediately. Why? Shai ani mitzvah, because poor people are always around and they need the money. So if you're supposed to give them, you don't give them, you don't have to wait three festivals. If you delay in giving them the money, you're already transgressing. Let's say there's no poor people around. He said, I'm going to give $1,000 to tzedakah. So take that money, put it on the side, and keep it there until you find a poor man. If you made a stipulation, in your vow, I'm only going to give the money when I find a poor person. Then you don't have to separate it off to the side until you find a poor person. There's no real obligation yet to give the tzedakah. This applies everywhere all the time. Bischam in the cave was men and women alike. Next two negative commandments, Kuf Pei Vav and Kuf Pei Zayin, 186, 187. Mitzvah Loisa say negative commandment on the payel, on the worker, while he's working, he's not allowed to eat. That which is growing from the ground, he can only eat at the end of the work. If he's working in the field, he can't eat while he's working. Only afterwards, like it says, it says, do not lift your sickle over your fellow's grain that is standing in the fields. And the Torah Shabbal Ped, the oral Torah teaches us that as long as a person is standing and he's harvesting and reaping, he cannot take the sickle to cut down some of the food to eat it for himself. It would be tantamount to stealing. It's not yours. It belongs to the person, the employee that you are working for over there. And therefore the food does not belong to you. You can't take and the second mitzvah, Mrs. Loisa say a negative commandment, al whatever he has cut down, he can't take. Nor can he take more than what he eats and give it to others. Which means you're allowed at the end of the day, after you end up cutting everything down and harvesting, there is some that you're allowed to take for yourself, but you can't take more than is necessary, and you certainly cannot take extra to give to others. Like it says, like it says, you cannot put any of this produce that you cut down into your vessel to take it with you. This applies everywhere all the time. Men and women, you cannot be a ganav, you cannot be a thief from the fields and the food <coughs> that you are working for. Kof Peiches, negative, Mrs. Loisa say the negative commandment 188. If when an animal is plowing in the fields, you can't muzzle him so that he, so that he should not be allowed to eat. So the person who's working, like we just said before, he's not allowed to take anything while he's working. But an animal, while he's plowing the field and he's working in the fields, you can't muzzle him, he has to take. Shinema, like it says, sure It says in the verse, you cannot muzzle an ox while he's treading on the grain. Not only an ox, but any animal that's busy doing his job. Whether he's treading and plowing or anything else that the animal does that helps to grow the field, as long as he is out there in the field working, you can't muscle him. Whether the produce or the vegetables or the fruits are already detached 
or whether they're still connected, this animal is allowed to eat anything. Bein chasama b'shas malacha, bein chasama mikoidim, ve'afilu chasama b'koil. Whether you muzzled him during the work, or he got muzzled beforehand, or he was restrained by the voice, which means the owner said, hey, don't eat that. V'yasama malacha v'yichasuma ha'yichud zeh, o'yimra Allah zeh. Any animal that's doing its work in the fields, and for in one way or another, he is muzzled, which means that you're not allowing him to eat, he transgresses his prohibition. Even if the animal that you're using is that belong to a goy, to a non-Jew, you are causing tsar balechayim, you're causing pain to the animal, you're not allowed to do that, and therefore you transgress. This in the kibos, this applies everywhere all the time, for men and for women. And the last mitzvah today, Kuf Pei Tes 189, Mrs. Kan Tzipor, if you chance upon a bird's nest, Lafanav in front of you, you cannot take the mother together with the young birds. Shinema, like it says, Ki Yikare Do not take the mother with the young. That will be the end of generations as it is. We know there's a mitzvah that we had of taking the the children. With, with taking the children, that you could do, the birds, the baby birds, the eggs, that you could do, but the mother as well, you cannot. This applies everywhere all the time. For men and for women are both going to be in that prohibition. Have a wonderful day. As we mentioned before, heading towards the finish line of Sefer HaMitzvah HaKatsar, Be'ez Hashem, between tomorrow and Friday, we will make a scene, we will complete this wonderful work. Have a wonderful day.